Hello everyone, a guide to how to use and build Reen. Reen or Rain, I actually don't know, but I checked the um, Japanese pronunciation. They call him Reen, so I'm gonna call him Reen, okay? So this is level 70, max status. We have um, Sword Saint and Ashen Hero. Sword Saint overall deals much more damage and Ashen Hero has more defense. So if you want to go um, more defensive, Ashen Hero it is, and then Sword Saint would be when you want to deal more damage. Okay, since he is a collab character, as long as you master his classes, then you will get the 4th and 5th bonds unlocked. Now let's take a look at the big heart bond um, difference. So sourcing when you have below 50% HP, damage taken minus 10%. Ashen Hero is when you have less than 7% HP, damage taken minus 10% when in battle. So when it comes to level 4 stats here, um, in general, when you have lower than 50%, in general, against AoE, damage taken is minus 10%. The Ashen Hero is only in battle, however, it's 7% HP or less. Level 7 here, sourcing when unit HP is below 50%, damage dealt plus 10% in general. And the other one is like vice versa, but in battle only. So even in the Heart Bond, you can kind of see that sourcing is more offensive while Ashen Hero is more defensive, but inside battle. Level 10 is plus 5% all hero stats. Okay, now let's talk about his talent. It can be a little bit confusing. So first, let's read through the description. So after using a skill, recover 20% HP and increase all other stats. At 3 star, 1%, 2, 3, 4 is 6, uh, six stars. So 1 is 3, 2 is 4, 3 is 5, 4 is 6 stars. Can be stacked up to 5 times. When an ally is defeated, all skill cooldowns are reduced by 1 and gain overpower. So overpower is a buff. So damage dealt plus 30%, damage taken minus 30%, and movement plus 1%. When dealing damage to an enemy, inflict one random debuff last two turns. So this is a very similar buff to Yusuke. When your ally dies, Yusuke gets stronger. If the unit already has overpower. So how do you already have overpower? There's a transform skill he can self buff. So if you already did that in the match, then if your ally dies, then the duration will be extended by two turns. When overpower wears off, gain cannot use the active skills, last two turns. If more than two allies have died, overpower lasts indefinitely. So if more than two allies have died, basically you need to have three allies dead. Okay, so this effect cannot be immunized or dispelled. You're in overpower your three of your allies die, you will be in the buff forever, the overpower buff. In PvP, it's quite hard to get five stacks because it is very long cooldown skills. So if you don't use clock, the chances is very, very low. The match might be over already. Because remember, it's per skill, you get one stack, and the cooldown is just very, very long without clock proc. And when it comes to when an ally is dead, so a summon unit is considered ally, so you can definitely abuse it with um, maybe Bozo summon, uh, Liana Sky Archer summon, and then just get them to suicide. PvP wise will be easier because you can basically just go up to an um, enemy and then just attack them. Then you'll get your 5 stacks very easily because they're also very beefy when it comes to a PvP contents. Okay, we're gonna look at the skills Autumn Leaf Cutter. Cost 1, cooldown 3, range 3, span 2. So it's the AoE skill. Physical damage, attack multiple enemies for 0 0.1 times AoE damage. If under Ogre Power, this skill becomes a fatal autumn leaf cutter. Alright, sure. Skills ban plus 1, deal 0 0.15 times damage. 50% chance to inflict 1 random debuff to enemies. So with Ogre Power, which means that's 2 random debuff enemies. Roar, a uh, very common infantry skill. Physical damage attacks a single enemy dealing 1.3 times damage before battle to spell 2, buffs from the enemy and inflict attack intelligent minus 20% for one turn. PvE skill, PvP, um, you probably want to use him as a AoE debuffer, otherwise there's really no point of using him over Elwyn, I would say. Actually, or any other infantry that does single attack. Arc Slash, cost 2, cooldown 3, range 5, span is a line. Physical damage attack enemies along a line, dealing 0.2 times damage, 
to inflate one random debuff. If under overpower, this becomes a fatal arc slash. Skill range plus one does 0 0.3 times damage. Chance of debuff is 100% instead of 50%. And again, with ogre power, it's going to be two debuffs. Okay, flash. Cost two, cooldown one, range one, span single. So physical damage attacks a single enemy for 1.4 times damage, critical hit rate plus 20%. Kirikaze has this skill, very strong, but it just doesn't really fit for um, Rin here. Light Reflect, lead ends a passive, healing received plus 15% when attacked by a melee attack, attack and defend plus 10%. This is more like a PvE um, skill, so don't bother bringing it to um, PvP because most likely you will be out of battle range and you will just probably use AoE. Okay, this is his transform skill, Spirit Unification, cost is 1, cooldown is 10, range cell, span self. So cooldown 10, I'm telling you, you you can use it more than once in Apex. Unless you have Sophia, Gizaros, um Fashion Buff with all your allies dead and stuff. Yeah, sure. Okay, active use, all cooldowns reduced by one, including the skill. Gain over power, damage dealt plus 30%, damage taken minus 30%, movement plus one. When dealing damage to an enemy unit, inflict one random debuff. So any any attack you do, it'll deal one random debuff. Last three turns. If already under ogre power, then extend the duration by two by three turns. So if you have an ally dead before you transform, now when you transform, it's gonna extend it for three turns. When ogre power wears off, gain cannot use active skills. Last two turns. Effects from this skill cannot be dispelled or immunized. I guess when using this skill, buff duration on this character will not be reduced. Very important how to use your transform. You probably won't bring it in um, PVE. You can easily just, I don't know, summon anything and just suicide. But this one for PVP, you have to be careful when to activate. So if you are out of range in maybe turn two or turn three, don't transform the turn before. When you know you're in range, when you're ready to attack, then you transform. Mind's Eye, another skill that Kirikaze has, passive crit rate increased by 15% after landing critical hit in battle the enemy's passive skills are disabled last two turns a skill that you probably will bring only in PvE uh, this is one of the main, main skill of his Assignment uh, 3C which I'll talk about later um, unfortunately the cooldown is very very high cooldown is 5 okay so cost is 2 cooldown 5 range 3 span is 3 Phys physical damage Attack multiple enemies for 0 0.2 times damage with a 50% chance for one random debuff. If under Ogre Power, this skill becomes Great Gale. Skills back plus 1, damage is 0 0.3 times, and chance of debuff is 100%. So when it comes to um, PvP, definitely transform yourself before using the skills to get the 100% debuff. And on top of that, you get Ogre Power, which is 2 debuffs. Um, the AoE damage is also stronger than other AoE skills that he has when it comes to um, oh, when you're in over power. Okay, let's take a look at his 3C here, Ash and Leaves. Cost is 3, cooldown is 6, range 3, and span 3. Physical damage attacks multiple enemies in range dealing 0 0.3 times AoE damage with a 50% chance to inflict one random debuff. Also inflict two stacks of burn at the end of action. Receive one time Rain's um, attack as fixed damage can be stacked. Last two turns. If under overpower, this skill becomes termination slash dawn. Skills back plus one. Damage is 0 0.36 times. Chance of debuff is 100% and the burn effects inflict cannot be immunized against. So basically don't use the 3C until you are in overpower um, form. In overpower you basically cast four debuffs including the two stacks of burn that also causes the burn effect cannot be um, immune but can be dispelled even if you have source smith metal the burn effect still can't be immunized okay we're gonna look at Rean's debuff list the debuff that you can cast so heal reversal this one only list those talent can do but now Rean is the second hero that can do that and then there's hero block mobility minus two and you cannot guard Buff block, damage down minus 20%, damage taken plus 20%, cannot use active skills, passive skill sealed, and lose 20% HP when ending action. So even Bozo, the debuff king, does not have real heal reversal. Well, he has all the other ones, but he doesn't have that. 
Okay, recommended weapon, a balanced blade. You only lose quite some damage, but then your AoE spam plus one. It's easier to hit more targets. Demon Slayer is also very, very nice. If you get a critical attack, you can dispel one buff and apply one debuff. So you can potentially deal five debuff with his 3C and dispel one buff. I feel like this one is the best because with um, Ogre Power, his skill span is already plus one. And then I think Balance Blade will be a little bit too OP when it comes to the span. Plus sword gives you a 50% chance to deal fixed damage. All these three swords work with AoE. However, if you don't have any of these, any attack plus 10% um, sword would be good enough. One of Reen's biggest weaknesses is um, ranged attack, so I think Aeolus Battle Armor would be a very good fit for him. But that 30% chance to reduce incoming damage by 30% might help him survive, along with his Ogre Battle Talent. Carbon Fiber is the only armor that gives attack. So remember his Heart Bond level 4? 50% um, less HP, damage dealt minus 10%, and then with Carbon Fiber, you'll get attack and skill plus 8%. I would say if you are going to use Demon Slayer, I think Carbon Fiber is probably the best since it'll increase uh, crit critical chance. Okay, Aeonis armor is not bad as well. Remember whenever he casts a skill of his talent, he recovers 20% HP and with this armor you can get 30% HP recovery. Bloodline is pretty much the opposite of Aeolus but um, under melee attack. I think this is more recommended for PvE because you'll probably do a lot of in battle or close up range um, battle. Fur is definitely one of the best for Rin here because when he's out of reach, he's going to get that extra 10% skill damage or when he transforms, you'll also get that. In PvP, most likely you will need to transform at least one turn. Carbon Fiber Helmet, same reason as the Carbon Fiber Armor and they do stack if you use both. Gaia is also a very nice helmet to have. Um, first, it boosts magic defense plus 50%. Remember, it's big heart bond. Doesn't matter if you use which class, sourcing or Asian, Asian hero. I think that's the name. So, one is like minus well below 50% HP, and one is below 70% HP. You get the you get those benefits. In this case, when this is below 80%, when it's over 80%, reduce incoming physical damage by 10%. So you pretty much can always reduce incoming physical damage by 10%. Reen is pretty much a handsome bozo who deals physical damage. So if he gets um, silent, he basically doesn't do anything and stands there for a while. It's not like bozo where he can do a two range attack and can fly. Source Smith Metal is also nice that because it's immune to fixed damage. Wing Shin Guard gives him 8% attack and makes him tankier as well. So Wing Shin Guard is a very good option. Okay, Apex Boots, um, one of the best infantry accessory. If you use Demon Blade, uh, Demon Slayer, with the Apex Boots, it's perfect. If you have Balance Blade, you can probably get away from not using Apex Boots and get more attack. You know, you probably want more attack back from any other attack accessory. Because you lose, like, because it doesn't add any attack stats when it comes to the Balance Blade. Okay, I don't know if he's good in Ancient Beckoning, but anyways, for the Mastery Stone, these are the stats. You guys can take a look. Attack would definitely be your main um, main stats that you want to increase. In Chan Choices, we have Magic. Magic gives you maximum damage if you play him as pure um, AoE dealer. Next we have Breeze. I think Breeze in general is really good for um, DPS because they lack the mobility. And on top of that, um, that 10% damage dealt is is really good. Especially with his um, talent where he gets, when he is an Ogre Power, he gets 30% plus, plus this one would be 40% damage dealt. Clock, in my opinion, is the best um, for PvP because of its long cooldown and its talent requires 5 skill use to get the um, what you call it? maximum status stack. Usually when Rain uses all his stuff, he uses all his AoE, he, he's just sitting around and he can't do anything after his um, ogre power is gone. He can't use his active skills. So, Pretty much he's going to be useless after that. So you want to hope, you know, hope that clock is going to proc, then you can 
abuse his uh, 3C or his AoE again. Last but not least, we have Full Moon. If you're playing Asian Hero, it's probably best to have Full Moon because it makes him even tankier. Um, otherwise, you probably want to use Full Moon for only PvE in my opinion. Okay, soldier choices. We have Highlander. Highlander is good. Makes him very even more tankier, I would say. All damage reduced by 15%. And, I mean, it doesn't really matter the soldier. You probably won't um, encounter an actual battle unless you have to. If you're using just AoE, this is good to um, survive. Highlander, probably only good to use for PvE um, just because you encounter an actual battle. He does a very good job when it comes to attacking and when getting attacked. It's only one of the best troops for um, infantry heroes. Guardian Cavalry serves the same purpose as Highlander. You just want to be there to be like a me shield if you are going the high on uh, the Highlander. You're, if you're going with the AOE focus strategy, and I do recommend only using it probably in um, PvP and depends what other, what your opponent um, team formation is and what troops they're bringing. Okay, Steel Wing good both for PvE and PvP, and it's only. Uh, the purpose you're bringing is against um, long-range attackers such as mages, archers, assassins. And that's it for this guide everyone. I hope you guys have a better understanding about the character and how to use and build ring. So this one's a little bit different from my previous how to build guides because I did not put in the um, battle, like the skill animation. Mainly because when I make this guy, the character is not out yet, so I don't have access to um, Reen. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this guide and find it helpful. If you do like what you're watching, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.